Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabor here, and I'm going to be reviewing a movie that eventually became one of the biggest cult classic phenomenon of all time. The movie that made it up for the fact that this movie even exists in this generation. A movie that I'd never thought I would dare to review this, even if I must, because this film makes Troll 2 look entertaining than it already is. In fact, it's even worse than Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Actually, it's far from it. Yep, folks, I'm going to be reviewing the movie, which ironically, I'm actually inside a title known as The Room. Yep, a movie called The Room, which is nothing like any other, but this is, of course, it. A movie, The Room, which stars a guy who has a hair of a hair metal band, a voice that's like a bad, very bad French accent in a sort of way, and he has a face of a creep. Sort of like a cross between uh, Brad Dorf and many other wrestler, in the world. and that's what you get. A guy who, who not only stars in the movie, he's also the executive producer, the producer, the writer, and the director. Go figure, on all accounts. But. This strange, small independent film that I'm about to review is something I never thought I would see because this plays out like a bad softcore porn movie that I watched on Cinemax. Yeah, because once you get bad dialogue in a film like this, you know you're in for, for something. Since the bad dialogue, in for the sex. Well, that's what this movie had to be when I sat through this mess. But on the other hand, it was a goofy mess. But then why did I start laughing at this mess, yet alone enjoy it? Well, I think we're going to find out for ourselves. The movie stars, of course, Tommy Rousseau, along with Juliet Danielle, Greg Sestero, Philip Haldeman, Kyle Bogue, Caroline Minot, and Robin Paris. Well, it's in the level of movies such as Troll 2, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, and even Planet 9 from Outer Space for this level. But at least those films are way better than this. So this is going to be a tough one to deal with, but here it goes. The movie begins set in San Francisco. A successful banker named Johnny, played by Tommy Rousseau, had lived with his fiance Lisa played by Juliet Danielle. They shared an intense relationship characterized by constant, passionate lovemaking. Despite of its idyllic existence, Lisa has explicably become dissatisfied with her life, and in one afternoon, he confides to her best friend Michelle and her mother that, that she considers Johnny to be a boring man. So, Prior to her scheme, and she listened to Michelle's advice for her life to be grateful for what she has. And her mother consults her that a financial stability is more important than happiness. So, Lisa's plan was to seduce Johnny's best friend, Mark. So he is into Lisa's advance, and then their affair continues to go through the remainder of the entire movie, even though Mark appears relentless at the outside of each other's sexual encounters. Even though they're trying to break off Johnny and Lisa's relationship together, as the wedding date approaches, Johnny's clock at the, his bank slips, and Lisa alternates between glorifying and violating Johnny to her family and friends, both make false accusations of domestic abuse and defending Johnny's against criticism. That's what Johnny had to, to deal with by having Lisa confess her, her infidelity with her mother 
by attaching a tape recorder to the conversation, which of course leads to the conversation of her mother saying that she has breast cancer, and then so on. Meanwhile, the college student and neighbor Danny came along, a student who Johnny financially supports and loves like a son to him, has a mysterious run-in with a drug dealer named Chris R. Who Johnny and Mark overpowered to take to the police. Once, once that's been going on, they had to talk about all their relationships and, and all this other stuff that's been going around and so on. I mean, it's just, it drags on way too long. And th that is until Johnny finally discovers that Mark does have a relationship with his fiancée, Lisa. And that's where everything went downhill from there. Started to create more tantrums until he decided to end his life you know, as the film goes. And that's what happens when this movie turns out to be the most ridiculous and laughable scenes I've seen in movies like this today. Because I couldn't believe how utterly stupid the script really is. And this whole you know, this whole relationship between Lisa and, and Johnny, yes, I agree. It started to get old real fast as it as it went along. But I know it's trying to become like a parody of all these dramas that we often see in movies today, because I know we often get that. This is like one of those typical films that when it's gonna be over and and when do you want to shut this off after <laughs> you know, 40 minutes or so, or maybe even longer. But then again, I like to sift through because I like to see what was wrong with this particular film all the way around. Boy, this is gonna get longer than I thought. But here it goes. I thought the acting in Tommy Rousseau, no matter how laughable it is, and it really is, coming up with his French speeches such as, Oh, hi, babe! Or, how, hey Mark, how's your sex life? Or I did not hit her. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh hi Mark. That sort of speech. That, that's all he ever says throughout the whole movie, with his dubbing voice of his when it comes to all this uh, mouth movements that he's been doing. You know, like hey hey Mark, hey Mark, hey Mark. Hey, hey. <laughs> And it, it, it's just so laughably bad. Once you see this, it's just, oh my god. It's just so hilariously bad. Um, oh boy. And the sex scenes in this movie. Wow. You wouldn't believe how long those sex scenes have. It felt like it was been going on for 20 minutes. I'm not kidding. It felt like 20 minutes and I wanted to just shut it off after that. Or just fast forward it to to the next scene. I mean, okay, so I know watching sex scenes is a pleasure thing to deal with, but why does this have to go on for so long? Okay, so now I had to see Rousseau's butt during that one scene. Oh, brother! <laughs> I mean, I had to see his ass. You know, you know. Oh, well, I don't want to give it too much, but that's just that's just me. Well, everything just goes on way too long. The conversation between Lisa and her mother is a huge bore. Yes, she talks about breast cancer that she has, you know, the mother, of course. And then, and then she talks about if they thought that this whole financial thing would, would help out for Johnny. And then this whole thing just goes on way too long. But I guess you get the whole point of what's wrong with this movie. And this whole <laughs> drug dealing thing uh, from Denny. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's just so hilarious. The, the drug dealer just couldn't stop saying, Where's my fucking money? Denny? Denny? What's my fucking money? Or who couldn't forget the other scene? But when Johnny was fighting with Mark during that party, it was like saying, <laughs> Oh, th this got me laughing because 
you know, no matter what you see, it was just hilarious. It was insane. <laughs> Get out of my house. I'll kill you. I'll break every bone in your body. I'll kill you, you bastard. You're just a chicken ship. Cheep, 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 cheep. Oh, man. It's <laughs> just... And then he says, in another scene where, after that followed, he says, while well, he was in the bathroom, after hearing a conversation from Lisa and her mother, in a few minutes, bitch, Lisa says, who are you calling a bitch? He says, you and your stupid mother. Uh, I actually heard that um, when this movie was played during midnight showings at all these local theaters, including the Sunset Five, which is now the Sundance, I heard a lot of people were throwing spoons. That, yeah, they were like throwing plastic spoons on the entire screen, you know, once they started watching this. And all this. I also forgot to mention there was that famous line that started to make fun of that line that you heard in the movie. A Rebel Without a Cause with James Dean, such as, You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Which almost sounds like he says, Give me a cheese pizza! I even noticed that too, because that's, by listening to those dubbing mouth movements he's been doing, it sounded like that. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's so bad, it's good, but it's just, you know, you just want to, you're just in for the, the jokes and stuff. I guess what Tommy was so wanted to do was he wanted to do a parody of, of all these dramas. And we want to have him one. And I agree, it's not a good movie. The script is awful. The direction is bad. I mean, cinematography, you know, for better or worse, could be good no matter how stupid and shitty <laughs> this place started to look. I mean, because it is done in, the, in beautiful San Francisco. But all the scenes that they shot in, in this movie were all done in, in green screens and everything, so you can tell. I had to say, it, it had a beautiful location for San Francisco, but sadly, even San Francisco had better movies than this. That's for sure. So, in retrospective, I had to say, if you don't have anything better to do in your life, I say, you know, like if you want to waste uh, 90 minutes of your spare time, maybe a, maybe even more than that. I say, watch the room for yourself, no matter how bad it is. Because trust me, it's going to be as laughable as it can get. So that's my review, and <laughs> I'm not very proud of it, but who cares? So anyway, I give the room for all of our sake of humanity, or having to waste my precious time one and a half stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later much later bye